Oh, sardines, my sardines, how brittle are thy bonesies. Your fishy tails are oily, your fishy scales are smelly. Oh, sardines, my sardines, why are you super crowded? What a concept, packing 25 full and complete fish into an attractive oval tin can. Makes me think of claustrophobia, <laughs> but it's quite the opposite. The fish seem to be in their element. Claustrophilia, if that's a thing. I got a few cans of sardines in my pantry, quite a few. Hmm? You know you do also. They make great emergency food and one never knows when the next emergency will happen. Trying to get food in April of 2020, Whew. Makes me shiver just saying that. All we could get from Safeway delivery was frozen Brussels sprouts to eat and to wipe our asses with. <laughs> Ooh, well, I am not planning to be caught off guard without nutritious food in my pantry again. Saving them to savor for the next emergency. Oh, heck, let's have some on a soda cracker. <laughs> Canapes, throw a slice of pickle on there too. Mmm, canned sardines, the oily and smelly wonder food. The only food I'll eat, bones and all. Makes me feel feline. Meow. Tiger Lily doesn't like sardines and mustard. She likes them to be in just water, but I sure do. <laughs> mm, mustard. In the 1930s, people would swallow a living goldfish whole. A terrible idea due to the fact that raw goldfish carry parasites. Some guy started the fad by doing it for 10 bucks. <laughs> 10 bucks must've gone a long way in the 30s. And in the 50s, the college kids shifted their silly competitions and fads, and suddenly, instead of swallowing a goldfish, it was, how many people can we stuff into a phone booth? <sighs> Pack in a phone booth like a sardine can. All neat and tidy, arms and legs tight, emulating the can of fish. Or just willy-nilly, helter-skelter, arms and legs everywhere, with a head sticking out under a guy's ball sack. Ooh. <sighs> oh, phone booths. There was one every block. It was a service for those who didn't have a phone in their house, a landline. That was the only sort of phone. Nobody had a mobile phone. You had to find a phone booth if you were traveling. You, you'd go down the block, you'd see this little three by three foot square booth, about seven feet tall, and you'd gently open the little door, pop in, sit on a little bench and drop a dime in the slot. And then you literally dial the number on the rotary dial of the party you were trying to reach. That's where we get the expression, drop a dime. How many college guys do you suppose can fit into a three by three by seven space? Hmm? More than you can possibly imagine. In Durban, South Africa on March 20th, back in 1959, about 25 college guys were photographed packed into a phone booth. And they all lived through it. The only trend I had to live through in college, thank God, was running buck naked across the campus. My crowd stripped our clothes off and ran as fast as we could, barefoot, and tits and ass flapping in the breeze until we only saw a streak of humanity flying across the quad. And to be quite frank, I almost died of embarrassment when I got to the end of our streak route. Poor planning. I didn't have a bathrobe stashed in the phone booth. My college friends had pranked me. They took my bathrobe and my Adidas and threw them up into the air and they, they landed in some power cables just dangling there. I'm not about to mess with a power line. And that's how I ended up with a bad case of scopophobia. Oh, that's the fear of being stared at. Well, that's another story, my friend. But if you want to know the truth, that instance of my tennis shoes getting flung over a power line, I truly believe that was the first instance of tennis shoes hanging from a power line. Meh.